Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the weekly outlook. Glad to see so many of you in here. Hope we get much more. I was hoping all of you would bring a friend. Be kind to some friend you have, and that would be nice. If you have questions, type them in the Q and A. I will, and, and if you're just asking, you know, general things, my in the Q and A, if you ask a question that some of the people in my panel could help you. Let me see if I can add a few more people to the panel. Is Victor in the room? Is Mark in the room? I don't see Victor in the room. Is Mark in the room? I don't. Nope. And I don't see Benny in the room. Is Benny in the room? No. Anyway, Sherry, you'll have to do that. You'll have to answer them. There's a question you can answer. I see somebody's asking with a Mac before you can answer them. Let's go ahead. Let's start. So let's start with some of the trades we were looking at and we were in New Zealand last week. Remember last week we were looking at these three trades. So we got taken out of this twice for break even. I'll just give you guys a head up. We were doing this in our room and it's really messy. We caught this trade and this breakout here. And we put it to break even. It went back, took us out break even. Then we took the second breakout of this one. We got another break even trade there, right? So we got two break even trades and it's not going, you know, we just decide we're going to stay out and watch. What it's doing is actually making bigger consolidation. I will come to the chart itself and we will, we will do it in details what it's doing because there's still a, a big move in it to come. On the Euro New Zealand, you notice this pattern, it's repeating itself on the Euro New Zealand. So if you're taking the Euro New Zealand breakout, and if any one of you took this breakout trade, I think the first breakout trade you would have gotten was this one here. So if you took that breakout trade, you got a break even. And if you took the second breakout trade, I actually post the update to that chart, say take a break even trade. Because the trade to the, for the New Zealand today is this one here. That is the trade we are looking for at the New Zealand, right? It's a short trade, so if you're not in, don't worry if you're not in that trade. At this point, we will be looking at to see what the New Zealand will do, right? At this one. Sherry, you may want to mute your mic because the typing is um is coming over. Sorry, I'm no sorry. Problem, no problem, that's okay. Yep. So we're, make, we're in this pattern here, and a pattern like this tends to do something like this. It could go down or they could go back up and break out. So we are not sure what this pattern is as yet. The structure to the upside is still very much valid because if you look at the daily charts, we're looking at the daily chart. This is what, what I see now in terms of structure making. I want you to pay attention to this corrective structure we had here. We had an impulse, we went on the very long-term corrective structure there, then they made another impulse. There's a very good chance that this impulse to the upside is not ready to go as yet, which means we could be in a long-term corrective structure here. They could go back up here as a one, two, three pattern, and then we get one more impulse down, very sharp impulse, not a very huge impulse, before they turn. This trade to the upside will come. It's a matter of time, right? That doesn't mean we don't get trades or we don't trade this. Once it goes, I think there's a, that's a question from Pankaj today that he said, sometimes the chart doesn't go anywhere and I'm, I get very frustrated. And the reason is because if you don't understand that instead of the impulse starting, you're actually within a consolidation, then you're in trouble, right? Once we start seeing the behavioral pattern of the structure that changes, Immediately, we know that they are probably going to make long-term consolidation. And that means we just take very short trades in this. We still trade it. But those trades, every now and then, you'll see me post a chart, and I'm going to say, this is a short-term trade. Get in, take your profit, and get out. That's all. You don't want to stay in those trades because they're very short-term. Right? You probably get in, take a couple of pips, 50, 60 pips out of it, and get out. If you get 100, you're lucky. Right? Get in, get out, and that's it. Because you don't have long-term plans in those trades. There are trades where we do have long-term plans and we keep them. This was one. It started very well. Now it's not going. So we will wait to see what the next move is. And if the next move is to the upside, but it's going very slow, I will post updates to this chart showing you guys that we are going to take very small trades up until it gets a breakout or we start an impulse. Right? That means you're not in a rush to trade it as yet. So let's wait, we'll look at that. And the Aussie New Zealand is still very actively up, but we are making a deeper consolidation. You guys should pay attention. The chart never moves in a straight line, right? This was a very, very big move down. I wanted to see this move from the top here to the bottom here, that was one hell of a move. Even if you exclude this consolidation, from there to there was one hell of a move. 
but it doesn't go in a straight line, right? So people start freaking out when they're in the chart and they're getting a pullback like this. They start to get crazy. Oh, what is going on? I'm in the trade. It's not going, especially if you jump in the trade at a very late point, right? So you don't have to worry. This is just the start of an impulse. Put it in a daily and it's just one single move going up, right? If I take everything out in this chart so you can see, let's just remove everything from this chart here. And you can see it's just a single move up, a small single move up, right? So what if that, I think some of you may want to ask the question, why do, why do you think it's going to go up and it's not going to go down? Well, we don't know that as yet. This could still come back down, right? For this to confirm that it is going to go up, which is what it's doing right now, it has to make a correction in here, kind of a corrective structure. And if we get that corrective structure here, this would confirm the upside. Now, why I think this thing is going to go up? Because we're looking at this bigger structure. And this bigger structure in relationship to that tells us it's likely going to go up. So there's, a, there's almost an 80% chance that the impulse is starting, but we are making a correction right now. So no need to panic, no need to worry, no need to start jumping around. You don't know what is going on. I want you to look at this one. And we traded this. We came out of the first trade in here. We got in the second trade in there. We got in the third trade there. We got in the fourth trade there, and we came out of all of the trades here. See? So the similar thing we are going to do here. We're going to wait for the – we got in the first trade. I came out of the first trade because there is a chance that the second wave pull back. If you, on the, if you know wave theory, there's a chance that the second wave pull back is pretty deep, and then they will take off. In this case, this was not the second wave. This was the second wave pullback. See how deep that was? The wave started from this one, that sharp, small, sharp impulse up. See this small, sharp impulse here? That was the first wave, and this was a deep pullback. So we bought after that pullback. In this case, we managed to buy very early here. So if we get a nice pullback here that is not too deep, sorry, it wouldn't be like that. Let me just draw it nice. If we get a pullback here that is not going to be too deep, it is going to give us an amazing trade up. So the reason we, we got out of that trade on the four hour, this is where and how we got out of it. When we broke that four hour trend, we got out of it because it's no longer valid. They're making bigger corrections and that means we will look for buys and sell setups short term until the trend starts again and then we will trade it or we will do nothing and wait for the trend to start and then trade it again see it's easy you have to understand that is why it's called wave theory because they make waves they make small waves and then they make big waves and then they make bigger waves if you're new to here if you're new to my room and you're the first time in remember the basic concept an impulse a correction and an impulse find your correction and look for the next impulse that is your trade so we got our first trade out of this right we got our first trade out of this we're waiting to see what is happening here and then we're going to take the next trade out of it right we will get that trade there's no question if we will get it you may not get it we will get it right it's a question of waiting for it to happen right so that's what we do here uh, Come back, to the, those are the three basic ones, right? I want to go through a number of charts more, but before I go through, I wanted to do a very, very short talk on, um, because I think that question came up today in one of my charts about news events. I posted a, a yen chart that is showing, by the way, I want to show you guys some of these yen charts. They're amazing, and they're all showing us the very similar thing. They're all showing us that there's a possibility for one very nice impulse to the upside to make complete a one, two, three way pattern. We can already see that. Some of you may not see it. We can already see that happening, not only on this chart, on the yen chart, but also on the Aussie yen that I posted. And I hope I got a like from all of you on this chart because this one, this chart is amazing. We have been tracking this chart like, you know, like very easy. All the cells in this chart was there for us all the way. We were from the top here, right? we started to look for those patterns coming down, right? From, from the top there, we started to look, we'll watch for that break for a cell. That cell was an amazing cell, right? But did go down very far, right? So we start tracking that chart. Here is the next one. Watch for this pattern to go up back. We thought they were gonna go to the top. See that pattern? 
how perfect that worked. They actually came down here. They went up, they came down, went up there. Look at that. They actually went up. Not They don't follow the arrows, right? But they actually go where we wanted them to go. They came to that top there. Make a, make a correction. We got in on this trade here, came down here. Make a deeper correction. And then came. They actually fell down first here. This was where they make the bottom. Right? And we still think that is the bottom. So if you look at the chart now from where we're looking from this point of view, which is we think this is the low of the chart, that completed a five-wave structure. Completed one, three, five with two corrections up. And we think this is making a first impulse to the upside with correction in play now so they could come here and then go right back up. This is the trade you're looking for. And this is not the only one. If you go to the New Zealand yen, you're seeing a very similar structure, a very sharp impulse up and a one, two, three. We, you, you will have a short-term sell here, breaking this low. Most of, most of the, the support resistance guy will go into their sell there because it broke their, it broke their resistance, their support, and that means they're going to look for sell. We would be looking for a buy because that is exactly what it does. It broke what your imaginary line you have there and then it goes the opposite direction because there is no support there. Not there, not anywhere else in the chart is there any support. So once it breaks the bottom of that A wave and we are looking at this as a possible A, B, C structure. Once we do that, we'll be looking for the next impulse up. This is the trade you don't want to miss. You only have to get one of them. You don't have to get all of them. Right? And if you get one of those, you will actually do very good. So the yen pairs are showing that the euro yen has a similar structure. Let me show you while we are in it. Uh, euro yen. And if some of you know, we've been tracking me for a very long time. You know how long I've been waiting for this euro yen to go up. Pretty similar structure. Look at this is the daily chart. Let me see if I can make it smaller. Yep. We've got an impulse done. We've got a correction. We have another impulse. We are getting a correction here. And very likely we may get one more done or we will break out. So we will watch them when they come to this point. But this is the trade we'll be looking for. There were some short-term trades in the euro. Most of you remember the euro yen and the Aussie yen, some short-term trades we took on the dollar yen. I took the dollar yen that time when most of you took the euro yen. I think it was a 60-minute post area. There was a 60-minute trade to the downside there. This one, this sell setup. That trade down on a 60 minute. That worked out pretty well, I think. I don't know where it's gone. Yep, that worked out pretty well. It didn't only come here, it actually broke and we posed the head of heads up for you to keep it, which if you did, you did very well. We're in a deeper correction here, see this? I think this pattern, this corrective pattern is just a bigger corrective structure. You can see that they're making like, they may even go back up here and this may be a good area to sell from. Looking for this trade here, Dong, if they do that. If they don't, there's a short trade here. Ignore that trade and wait for the upside because if they start to go up, you have a very big trade to the upside. Completing a bigger three-wave structure. One, two, three. The power of wave. Let's see if it works. It works very often. It's not because of what we do. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing. It has all to do with understanding structure. So come back to what I wanted to talk about. Very short. Give me five minutes. Listen very careful. I think it's important, especially for you if you're a fundamental trader. I keep saying very often, don't fool yourself, guys. You know very little about fundamental effects on the chart. We know very little. I know nothing. And if you know something, it's very little to make you become a fundamental trader. To be a fundamental trader, you need to be either one of those huge hedge fund managers having millions of dollars, a banker, right? Who has huge sums of money that you need to change on long-term purposes. Not short-term purposes, very long-term purposes, right? You're, as, as Warren Buffett once said, if you can't hold a stock for five years, don't buy it. That's fundamental trading. If you can't hold it for five years, don't buy it. I think that's a direct quote from him. If I, if I'm not in, you know, if I didn't miss anything, right? Or I could paraphrase it. I think that's what he said. If you can't hold it for five years, that's fundamental trading. We don't do fundamental trading here. We don't have the ability to do that. We don't have enough information to do that. Those guys have geniuses sitting with them studying a hell of a lot of things. 
I hope you know who is Warren Buffett, right? So your that question makes me want to laugh. Five years for real? He holds stocks for 10 years, for 20 years. Uh, you're not talking, I hope you know who we're talking about, right? So that question was like, don't make me laugh, right? We are not talking about somebody in trading view, right? It's not, it's not a, one of the guys in trading view. We are technical traders. We want the trade in the next hour, in the next two hour, in the next four hour, right? We are not fundamental traders and we will never be fundamental traders. Don't fool yourself. Don't go around with your $1,000 in trading view, $10,000 in trading view, you know, pretending you're a fundamental trader, right? You can't, you can't do that. It's a waste of time. Right? We don't know what the immediate news will do, but here's what you should know. Whatever the market is doing, whatever news is happening in the world, whatever, even the, 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 the interventions that banks are planning, even the manipulation that they're planning, everything that they are doing is reflected in the, the charts. The charts create this pattern because of those activities. The pattern is not created by themselves. The pattern is created because of a, of a sum total of all those activities that are happening, right? Because of what all the central banks will do, because of how they relate to each other, because of the, how the economy is being viewed, how it's being developed, because of all of these factors. It's because of all of these factors factored in that is making the price go one direction or the other or stay in one tight zone or move away from the zone is because of those activities that we see the price action behave a certain way. So if all the investors in the world who trades, I don't know, euro, let's go to euro and let me give you a concrete example of what I'm talking about. If all the investors in the world who are investing in euro, all the, the companies who are, who are doing trade in the euro zone, if all the central bank of Europe, all of them, are waiting for something or planning something or doing something but not actively participating in the market, the market will go into a tight consolidation. If you understand or if you can read that consolidation correctly, which is what we teach you to do, you have a high probability of telling what they're planning to do, which means you have a high probability of telling which direction it's going to go up or down. And you know why you have that high probability? Because when they are planning to do something, the market will behave a certain way. The, the reflection of that pattern will be a certain type, right? The way they, the, the, the way they behave will create a certain pattern. Their, their plans, their, what they're already planning to do, what they're doing internally, what they're doing that you can't see that is driving the price one way or the other. Those patterns, those will create, those, all those activities and all those news events, they create a pattern. And that pattern is a reflection of what they plan to do without telling you what they plan to do. You have a high probability of figuring out by simply looking at the chart. It's that simple. When there's activities happening under the Earth's surface that we can't see, somebody looking at a seismograph could tell you that you're probably going to have an earthquake somewhere. You're probably going to have a volcano somewhere. He doesn't have to dig down deep there. He look at the activities that are creating a certain patterns on the chart. When you go to your doctor and you say, doc, I'm not feeling so well. And he says, okay, go do a cardiogram. And then he looks at it and he can tell you based on the pattern on the cardiogram, is your heart working well? Is it doing what it should do? Is there a change in the pattern? Is, it, is there a problem with your valves? He doesn't have to cut your chest to see if your heart is working good or not, or there's a problem there. He could tell by the pattern, the behavioral pattern. It beats a certain way. It should have a certain pattern. And if there's a change to that pattern, something is wrong. And based on the type of change that he, he sees, he can, he can tell you it's the valve. It's one something else. It's the artery on the, on, the, on the heart. It's something else there that you're having. And then he will put his diagnosis and tell you what to do. That's what you do as a trader. You look at the pattern, and that will give you enough information to decide the direction of trade. Now, every now and then, we will get it wrong. Every now and then, we may, we may think we got it very correctly. It may go in our direction, not for the longer time as we expected, and then the pattern changed. That's okay. That is very okay. That's part of trading.
But 90% of the time, you will have the right direction. It is that simple. You just have the hardest part is learning these patterns, understanding them, understanding how they work, understanding how to identify the patterns correctly. That is the most important thing. And they're all rule-based. We have rules for everything. Right? So I don't need to go pretend that I understand news and I understand how people react to news and I have inside information or I know I have six, six you know, very intelligent people working for me who are, who are gathering information from around the world and could tell me where they think this stock is going to go based on you know, their, their years of experience and their collection of information that I have no access to. Right? It's just pretense. It's false pretense. It's being, you know, it's trying to fool people who have no idea who you are. And if you're in trading view, you're just like me, just a trader sitting behind your computer, nothing else, right? You don't have a team of traders. You don't have a team of experts with you. So don't pretend you can trade news. You can't. And if you try to do it, you'll lose your account, right? Because it wouldn't work for you. You'll win a trade, you'll lose a trade, but in the long term, you will not be the winner. That's the whole point. Try to do something that works more often. That is what we do. We find a pattern. We see that pattern in short term and long term. And then we try to get to see whether the pattern is going to do what we want it to do. And if it starts to do that, we are in the trade. We wait for the confirmation and we get in the trade. Win or lose, that's it. You can go check the charts and see how often they do what we want. We're in the Aussie trade. Remember how many times I was telling people, don't sell the darn Aussie at the bottom here. They were selling, selling, selling because they have resistance, they have support, they have a pin bar, they have some nonsense in the chart that they're looking at. How many losing trades in this Aussie going up? How many losing sells you had? Ask yourself. Because somebody saw a pin bar, somebody saw support, somebody saw resistance, somebody saw a butterfly, somebody saw a bat. And guess what? We wait until the structure completes itself and we sold it to the top there. And I'm still in the trade right now at break even because potentially I think this trade could come here. So that is why I move my stops to break even. And that's it. Nothing else. Just nothing else. We did nothing else. Just put it to break even now and leave it. If I get a break even trade, that's okay because this is not my target. Although I have about a 10, six to one already in that trade because we took the trade at the top here and you see that blue line. That is where our stop was right there. That is your stop, and you have at least two to one on that trade already. But that's not the target. The target is at the bottom here. So it either goes to my target. If it comes in the middle here and starts a change structure, I will get out of the trade. Right now, there isn't a change of structure. There is just a pullback. And that is something I can live with because I know they always pull back. They always pull back before they go down. They always pull back before they go down. So this pullback, the next drop maybe is going to be pretty sharp. And I want to be in the trade. That's it. See how easy it is? You don't have to look for things that are not reliable. Right? You, you have to look for the reliable thing. What is the structure doing? What is the possibility of that structure? I hope that helps all of you to understand what I look for in a chart. Not fundamentals. If you focus on the fundamentals, it will not work for you. It didn't work for anyone who, doesn't ha who is not a hedge fund manager or banker or you know, those values. We are not there as yet. Of course, all of, our, all of us aspire to be there. I wish I could be there, but I'm not there. And I don't think anybody in trading view is there because the people who are there, they're not on trading view, that's for sure. They're not wasting their time on trading view with us, right? Our job is to catch a trade today, catch a trade tomorrow, catch a trade for a week maximum, and that's it, right? So you got to be honest with yourself. Don't pretend you know news. People come, well, I'm, I'm looking at that yet, and because of what's happening in Japan, the fundamentals, I don't think you could get a move up. I don't care. I really don't care. I don't know what's happening in Japan. I have zero knowledge what's happening in Japan. They, 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 they probably forget to call me. They're calling that guy and telling him what they're doing, but they forget to call me. I'll have to write them a note and ask them, what's the, what's the deal about calling that guy and not calling me, right? It's, it's this nonsense people peddle. And they keep peddling it on your chart too, right? Hope they didn't do it. Let's go. Dollar index. I'll go through all the majors very fast. I'll go through. Watch those yen pairs, by the way. Dollar index potentially downside. Watch this. Potentially this pattern goes down. 
the reason I'm still in the Aussie for more upside, we discussed this in our trading room today, is because this correction here, this correction that we're in here, potentially could take a longer time. If they keep making this correction like this, the, the, the Aussie will go down. If they don't, if they start to break this, and I'm still in the Aussie, I'll probably exit it because once they break this, they're gonna come to this level and this pattern is a downside pattern. Let me just show you, this pattern should go down. When you see a pattern like that, you're looking for downside, right? So potentially we're looking for more downside in the dollar index. We just have to watch this, this, this pattern in here, this smaller flag. You can see it, I think all of you can see it. it. It may spend some time, hopefully next week it's still there because if they still remain in there next week going up slowly like that, I will get a very good trade on the Aussie. If not, I'll have to exit the Aussie for break even or probably a small profit, right? So Euro. Euro is in a very similar structure that shows upside. See that? They should finish this little piece here. They did break out today. Not a trade we will trade. Like I said, we don't trade in these zones because they're useless, right? This was the only trade we tried to get and we got it a little higher. That's why we took that trade. We come out here with, with a very small profit, right? This one is not a good one. This pattern potentially should go up. There is only one type of pattern structure that could break this to the downside, right? Let me take out all of this. The complexity, by the way, this is the next one that, that if a chart break a structure, breaks your support, it's gonna pull back to your support and you should sell. Well, that is if there is a support there. And if there isn't a support, well, then that's a wrong thing to do, right? So I am discussing theories, theories that don't work, right? So this is a consolidation. See, remember one trader said, when it's in this squeeze, I don't know what to do, I get frustrated. Don't trade it. Simple, don't trade it. When they will break out of that squeeze, remember this trade here, like I said, when it started to squeeze there, watch for the breakout of this squeeze. When they break out of that squeeze, they take off like a rocket, right? And that is where you want the trade. See that one? I think it was this squeeze here when I posted that they're in a squeeze, watch it. And they did squeeze for a longer term. They did go sideways for a good time. See that you keep going and then they break out. When they break out, they will go. I don't know how long they're gonna be in the squeeze, but I can tell you there is one going on here. We're in a consolidation. Wait, 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 wait. This consolidation could break both ways. And either way is a great trade. Either way it goes is a good trade. So first, let it break out first. And once it breaks, we're gonna be in that trade. Pong. Pong is in this huge sideways here. And we're at the bottom here sit, sitting at this string. I see a lot of traders already making the assumption that it's going to go up from here. Well, we don't know that as yet. I don't think it's going to go up from there because it's still making these patterns that are breaking to the downside, you see? This pattern does break out to the downside and they did break, but they're not going so far. So if you're in the trade, I hope you got out for break even because it's taking too long. When you took a trade like this and it takes so long to move away, you should not be in that trade. That's one of our rules, but I'm not supposed to you know, give it away. That's okay. Get out of the trade because this was the consolidation. And after they consolidate, they have to go. If they consolidate and they're not going, then they're consolidating again. Look, let me show you consolidation. This was the consolidation. When they break out, they go. This was the consolidation. When they break out, they go. This was the pullback, not so much of a consolidation. They break, they go. When, they, when they're in a consolidation, and this was a very huge consolidation starting from this place here, they break out, they go. If they don't go, if they're sticking around there, you need to get out of the trade because that means they're not going. And that means we are making a different structure. In this case, possibly, a leading diagonal, something we looked at in our, our trading room, possibly a leading diagonal, a pullback, and this could go up. You don't have a buy set up here. If this is going to go up, let's assume it is going to go up from there. You need this, this trade, this impulse here to go right up above this level. Go back above where the first impulse was and then start to pull back to go, right? So, there isn't a trade setup there for us. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on this, and next week I'll post a trade setup. Short term, it could go both ways. Short term, this could go down. If they go down, these two lines I have here, if they go down short term, once they break this line or break that line, we're going to go back up. So as you can see from the chart, we discussed it in our trading room. There is a long-term possibility for a trade to the upside. We just don't know if that is the low 
or if they have more load to go. So we just wait. When you don't know, you wait a little for it, right? You wait some more until you have confirmation that the trade is willing and ready to go in your direction. And then you take it a trade because that gives you a high probability. If you jump into the trade because you think you know that is what it's going to do, you will lose a lot of them, right? You will lose quite a lot of them. Aussie. Well, we are in this already. I showed you this one, so I can just leave it alone. If this makes a deeper consolidation here for you guys, for you guys, it will be a good trade setup for to join the trade. If I see a consolidation in here, I'll post it out for you. Short term downside. If this breaks the top only, then we'll we then we'll start look for buy setups. New Zealand, stay out of this for a while. We'll we'll see what it's doing and we'll come back to that. Swiss, we've been staying out of this for quite some while now because it's in this big structure and it's in the middle of it, not going anywhere. See that big structure there? This was a nice sell, by the way. This one is not giving us any trade. We, we are not trading this for the longest while because we can't tell which direction it's going to go. Not the direction in general. The direction should be upside. We don't know if they will come down here first and then go or if they'll break and go. But if they break this structure, it's a perfect buy, right? So we will be in that buy. Keep 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 a lookout for that buy. You you may want to type in in in, in English because I I think most people in here understands English, right? So keep a lookout for this. There isn't anything serious. Cat has a very good setup. Cat has a perfect daily setup. Let me just show you. Cat has been correcting for quite some time after this impulse, and I want all of you to pay attention to this trade here. Because when they finish this consolidation somewhere in the middle here, they're going to start to fall again. So give it a month or two more probably for consolidation. And this is going to give you one hell of a trade. I mean a very, very big trade to the downside. Right? So this consolidation is still going on. We had a nice trade, short-term trade. We always take short-term trades in these. Got out very much at the bottom. Not in the not in any more trade as yet. Let's wait. We are not this is not a trade setup as yet. Wait for it. If we see another great trade setup short term in here, I'll post it. They're short term trades because you're in a big consolidation, right? Remember what I said. When you're in a consolidation like this, any trade you take has to be short term. You get in, you take your profit, then you get out. Right? You're stuck on GU. Well, you will don't if you, you here's the first thing too you should know when you take a trade, right? Let me go back so we can help our friend in the GU there. First thing you should know when you take a trade is where you're putting your stops. So this was the breakout. Let's go with this. If you took this breakout here, let's just suppose you took the breakout anywhere in here, you should have a stop and your shops should be above here. That should be your risk because the target is way lower, much lower, right? Uh, should be above here. You don't want a too high stop either. Well, you take you put your stop at 29, 129. Stop loss at 129. You're in a buy. How would you have a stop loss? The price never went to 129. Oh, you're long. Okay. Well, if you're long, you don't have to worry about it. If you're long, it could still go up. You have a stop loss at the bottom here, so the why worry? Right? When you can go to break even, just move it to break even. It's going up now for you. So if it goes up and gets you to break even, just go to break even. Right? Okay. Well, can you guys just hold the questions for later? We're not there as yet. I'm just trying to help the guy who says he's stuck, but he's good. He's not stuck as yet. So let's go back. Swiss. Right? We were in the CAD. Sorry, CAD. Daily. Let me show you some important things here. If this breaks, if this pattern at the top here breaks to the downside, this is another amazing trade next week. Pay, pay attention to that trade. And if they break that structure, we're in one hell of a trade to the downside, right? I am not sure. I'm not sure if they'll break the structure this time. We could still have more upside. We had an upside here. We had an up move here. We got an up move here. We got an up move here. We could still come here and get one more up move, right? So we will see if they have, but if they break that structure, it's going to be amazing, right? Yen, I want you to focus next week on all the yen pairs. I'll post some charts out for you guys, but we'll be focusing on the up move, not the short down move. There is a short sell set up here. 
It didn't. It hasn't broken as yet, but when it breaks, there is a nice short sell setup, maybe Monday, Tuesday, and after that, we'll be looking for the turnaround. On the other trades, I'll see what else. You, I already show you guys the Euro Yen, the Aussie Yen, the New Zealand Yen. Let me see what else I want to show you. And this chart that is important. Oh, Pong Oz. Pong Oz trade. Pong Oz trade finally is trying to, to, to go up. We got a breakout here, and I think this consolidation is too small. It's not an amazing move to the upside, right? So I don't want to hype it to you that it's going to be an amazing move. It's funny when people start to post hypes, right? Everybody remember there was that 1,001 hype that I end up, I post two very, um, very, I should say provocative charts to that. I post the 3,003 pips and the 5,005 pips. They were both removed. Well, I expect them to remove because it was provocative. It was actually saying you guys are posting nonsense, right? And if everybody could post the nonsense like that, because you're not going to make a 1,001 people. What happened to those guys, by the way, with their promises? Hyping, hyping charts for, for novice traders. We got a move up, we got a consolidation, and we broke out of the consolidation, but they're not going. And that's not a good sign of a trending move. That means they're not going to go very fast. We could still get some more up move. We could still get some more up move, but it's, it looks very much like it's going to be very slow. So you can still look for buy setups. I think next week we'll get some buy setups in here. Actually, there should be a very nice buy setup in this chart next week. Let's see. Yep, you can look for it. As long as we stay above this trend line, we would look for buy opportunities. It comes down, likely going to go back up. We we'll look for buy opportunities somewhere here. Right? So. This was a nice impulse, a correction, and they made another impulse, but that's it. I don't think they're going down totally. If they break the trend line, then you should be looking for sales. Right? We'd look for sales. But in reality, I think we could get much more, at least a week more upside, because time-wise, it's too short. They will have to make more consolidation. So we can look for buy opportunities in this next week. Right? If you took the buy good, you should have a stop under here. Right? You should keep your stop under the structure. Calculate your risk right. Good, good, well done. Let's go. Pong New Zealand. We're gonna get a very nice buy opportunity here, but it's going to be short term. Let me show you guys. It's a nice one, but it's short term. See this consolidation coming here? You're gonna have a nice trade up here, like this, and like this, and it's going to be a short term trade. Okay? So that's next week. That's a good trade for next week, not a bad trade. And that's a solid trade because it looks good. The punk chief looked like it's going to break out on the daily. You can see that it looks like we've been consolidating at the low here and they're at the bottom of that move. And does look like they want to break out to the upside. We've got a sharp move here. So if they come back out of this thing and make a consolidation, we'll all be looking for this trade up. Right? There will be a very nice trade to the upside. All the yen pairs we did, gold, silver. Let's do gold and silver because I know a lot of people are in gold and silver. I am very interested in silver. And silver right now is going, we've made a move down. We're going sideways. If they keep going sideways like that, the next trade should be to the downside and then we're gonna go up. So this is the next trade you're looking for. You're looking for a sell on silver before the big move up came. If you were in my trade for chart for a while, in my webinars for a while, you would know I said they've completed a five wave pattern and they're making a deeper correction. We're looking to buy somewhere around here. 1775. We're looking to buy for the next one up. That that is where our buy zone is. So come back to the four hour. We may even get a very good sell. If they continue making this pattern in here, we may get a sell to this level, right? It's going to be a nice sell because they may spike the down very low before they come back up. If they, if they make a triangular pattern, there, they're gonna spike it all the way to about 16, 5, 17, very low. And then the upside will start, right? Goal, very similar structure. They're making a triangular pattern there. That is a pattern that shows downside first before any up move, right? So there should be a down move before they start going back up. I don't think this is long-term downside. Long-term, I still think we're upside. You can see that very clearly. 
But short term, they're going to come back down some more. So you, if you can look for a sell setup in the break of these patterns, these patterns do break both ways, but I think this time it's mostly breaking to the downside. Oil. Oil broke out, nothing new. Last week we spoke about this, that you, you're going to watch this structure they're making. And they will probably make a B wave in the middle here. I think oil has some more downside too. Let me put it back in the four hour. Oil has some downside. This, this pattern will probably go up slightly above here. And we will get another downside here as a one, two, three wave structure before they go back up. And then they go back up. Right? So let's see how that works. That is a good one. Uh, Euro Oz, uh, natural gas. Yes, let's look at natural gas because some of our traders do trade natural gas. We are making a deeper correction. You can see that. You're still in the uptrend and you're making a deeper correction. A small sell setup is there to this level and watch it here. They're coming very slow here. This pattern, if they continue like this, one, two, three, four, you could get a fifth one in it. There's a possibility for a fifth one up, and then you can see much bigger downside. So watch for this five waves up, and then the downside. Let's put it in a daily. A daily, that would end this five wave structure. That would end this structure here. And then we could see deeper correction before we go. So watch for this possible one more move up, and then the downside. All right, that's one more possibility in this trade to happen. Keep an eye on that one. It's a nice trade, especially if you can trade this. And then what else? Somebody wanted what? We can't go through all the charts. Nifty, let's do Nifty. The guys have been asking me that for a long, long while. Let's just look at it pretty fast. And for those who would be interested in the course, I'll take five minutes. If you give me four minutes or five minutes, I'll go through pretty fast what we do, and then we'll, we'll go for there, right? Because I get too much of that question on Skype. It's right now in a consolidation here. They broke this pattern out, and they're going to probably do more consolidation here before they go. I don't think this, this is too short a consolidation. It's going to be more sideways before they go back up. They do have more upside on the daily there. That's possible. As you can see, when they're making a move up, they would make a sharp move. They'll make a deeper consolidation, make a move small one, then they'll make deeper consolidations, and they'll go. So we're in one of those deeper consolidations now. I they'll just make some deeper consolidations here, and then they'll continue to move up. I don't think it's a fall as yet. So just have patience for this. You can trade this short term. There was a sell in that that we actually called, I think it was last week or the week before. You're looking for a sell setup. I think maybe in my class, I shouldn't say, I should say that in my group. You got an impulse here. It make a move like that, come back, broke. This was a sell setup somewhere in here, and it did go. If you get another flag, look for a sell setup. Look for a sell setup. It's most likely they'll continue in that direction for a while. Dollar, yen, and the weekly chart. We can look for that. I'm not sure why. We're looking for trade for next week, but let's see what is it you're looking in the weekly chart for. Yep. Potentially, this is a correction of this wave up. This is a correction of that. So we're going to get that wave up, come down here, and then we're going to start another wave up, maybe another wave down, then continue to go. So you're going to be in this zone for a long time. You're going to be in that sideways zone for a long time. You have a similar sideways zone here. Let me show you. Look, you have one here so that you can understand how they work. They made a sharp impulse down. They made one, two, three, and then you get a drop here. We're going the opposite direction. One, so think of this one, two, three, four, maybe four, maybe five, and then you go back up. See? Easy stuff, right? Not difficult stuff. And still some people are worrying about whether fundamental news could give me that small move to the upside. Right, I just said we look for this move here. That is the move we are trying to catch. Right, just look at the chart. We are trying to catch that little move, and somebody is coming to tell us what fundamentally what's going to happen in Japan, like they know. Right, this is nothing. I mean, nobody, in, no, the central bank of Japan will not even notice that change of price. Right, that's not what they're looking at. They don't look at small moves like that. 
So don't listen to those guys. Just don't don't worry with them with their their fundamental knowledge that they think they have. It's 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 not not real. Just follow the charts. If you keep following the charts, you will learn much more. Trade what you can trade. Trade what you can do. And we can trade structure because it's very short term. It's very good. It it gives you a fast trade in and out, and it has a high probability of happening the way it's happening. That's it. So that's what you got to do, right? You want to catch a trade today, tomorrow. <laughs> it looks easy, right? Ask my traders. Any of my traders are in here, by the way. Who we're having an, on, an ongoing course right now, and it's fun with those guys. A lot of they enjoying it, and you know you can ask them. It looks easy. It definitely looks easy. And the practical session is actually they have to do it in front of me. I make you the presenter. First, we first we have classes where I teach you. And then I make you the presenter and you have to present, you have to take a chart, take everything out and present that to me. And that's where it becomes not so easy, right? They could tell you. <laughs> we have a lot of them in here. They could actually tell you how it becomes difficult. So, okay, for those of you who want to hear about the course, let me go very fast. I'll just do this very fast so you don't have to worry, <laughs> right? It's going to be pretty short. So. Here's how we, here's how we, our room operate, because I get this question day in, day out. Julia knows that. She's one of our students right now. All these guys, uh, all of them, you see, type in there, they're our students right now, so they know what they're doing, saying. This is how we, we have a, a group on Slack, right? Let me just show this so you guys can remember how we work. When you join our group, you immediately get access to this group on Slack. On this group on Slack, you have information about the webinars that we do twice daily. You have information about the classes that we do. You have information about our trading group. And you have information about the chat group that we have, where the guys are chatting. You have channels on Slack for all those things. We have more channels than that, basically, but that's what you get. You can join the group anytime you want because it's a single payment for life. You pay once, you don't have to pay a single cent for the rest of your life. I don't believe in charging traders a monthly fee. When you do that, that becomes the, the way you make money. You make money charging your monthly salary from charging people 100 euros or $100 every month and you get 1,000 people giving you that money, right? You really don't care about their success. You care about them paying you monthly. The minute they stop paying you, you throw them out of the room, right? That's not what we do. You have lifetime access to this room. Once you join us once, the only thing you're paying for is my time to train you in the course. And I mean my time to train you in the course, right? You're paying me for that time. I train you for six weeks. We have training sessions. We do it for six weeks. After that, you have lifetime access to the group. So you get all the information we do. You get two daily updates from me and the charts. You get we will be we will be restructuring our trading room to make it much more effective now actually you guys will know about that at the end of the year we'll show you what we did right we're restructuring it the fees is very cheap if you think you're having lifetime access you're having two daily webinars and all of that tell me what you think it's worth with what people are going to pay right all of that and all of that is free we only charge for the six weeks course what is the six weeks course the first week of that course, I do all the classes. One hour daily, I do the classes. You get the recordings of those classes to look at as much as you want. I do all the classes and all the topics that we teach. Every day is a topic. And then the next two weeks, you go and practice what I showed you. And while you're practicing it, you're practicing it with one of my top traders who are helping out. And then you come and you do the practice with me which is when I say practice, you actually open your charts and you show us how you're doing. You become the presenter. You show us how, what you've learned. We correct you. You show us again. We correct you. And then I, you show me and I correct you. And you keep practicing. Then the, that's the, third, the second and the third week. The fourth week, we have classes again. This is where we do wave structures and all those things. Theories, the, 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 um, strategies, and money management and all those stuff. And then you go into two weeks of practice and trading, demo trading. And we correct you there again. We watch all the mistakes you make and we correct you there again. And then you get training with me again. And I correct the mistakes you make. And then you go into the trading room and you start trading with the guys in a demo until you become successful. And you get help there as well. And when you finish this course and you're going to sit in the room for the rest of your life, learning, practicing, asking questions, coming to all the webinars, when we do a next course, if you still need training, 
you can get training. We do marathons where I give people the training. You can believe me, the last marathon I, I, I said I'm going to do, anybody who needs training, one person wanted to take training. Everybody else, oh, I'm okay. So we don't have a limit to what we train you. As long as you need help and you need training, we will do it. We do some class I every now and then in most of our webinars or in class, we take trades, we break them up, we explain. So it's a nonstop training, it's a nonstop learning process and you have access to all of that. That's how simple it is. So if you're interested in the course, you send me a Skype message. Let's not make it very long. My Skype is, let me make that a little bigger so you guys could see it. Oh, not so big. Right. M-A-N-G-A-L-457. Send me a Skype message. Say you're interested in the course, and I'll give you all the information you need. Once you pay, you will be in the course for life. You don't have to pay anything else. The fee? 2500 USD. The next training course is starting in November, October 31st. So if you want to join, you got to join early because the course are filled up. Actually, we have about 10 people who will be taking the next course that paid much earlier for this course that we are doing right now. So they will be doing it in the next time. You don't have to do it the same thing. For some, I, actually, some of those people couldn't do it because of time. So they just change it from doing it this time to doing it the next time. And that's okay. They still have access to everything. Oh, they're not, they're not. 2017, I have no idea. We haven't even planned anything for there, for that. No plans for 2017. I don't plan so far. We don't have a structure. This is not the, the main business I do. I don't structure it that much. I just wait until a lot of people said they're interested and then we do one, right? So the one for November is because about 10 people already decided that they couldn't do it that this time. They're going to do it the next time and a couple of people already paid. Some more people paid. So, you know, I think within a month it should be filled. We, we, do, we do put a limit to how much people we take because we can, we physically train you. You get time to present on your chart. That takes time, right? All right, so hopefully you guys look, with, look at those yen trades. I'll, post, I'll keep posting those um, updates and everything should be okay. You have one last question if you don't mind. On the dollar Canadian daily chart, you were, you were talking about a big correction pattern and what is at some point it may break down. That's true. But one big move, do you look to enter as it is breaking down or do you look to wait? Oh, that's a daily one. We, we try to pick it from the very top. We try to get into that trade from the top of the correction, but I can't discuss that with you here, how we do that, right? I, too, I hope you know that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't go into the discussion of how we do that, but we always try to get into the top of a correction, especially a daily correction. Uh, what else? Could be a triangle, maybe. Then look, okay. So, okay, guys. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Remember, next time, invite a friend. I think he will tell you thanks for that because a lot of people, one of the biggest regrets a lot of people wrote me is that they, they actually see these webinars too late, right? They didn't get a chance to come in. So next time, share the link, invite a friend, and be here. Have a wonderful weekend, and see all of you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.